Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Good evening, I'm Ann Emanuel. Thousands of boxes of food were packed in Corning today as part of a volunteer event. Big Fox's Josh Feldberg was at the food bank of the Southern Tier to see who would be named Leader of the Pack. Over 100 Corning employees gathered at the food bank of the Southern Tier today to pack food items for schools to distribute to students who are food insecure. So today the Corning Incorporated volunteers are here to pack bags for the Food Bank's backpack program and um, that is one of our cornerstone uh, child hunger relief programs where um, kids who have been identified as being at risk of experiencing hunger in the home get uh, at school get a bag of kid friendly easy to prepare uh, food items uh, in a bag uh, slipped into their backpack discreetly every Friday. The employees were split into 10 teams and had one hour to pack 720 bags of food for the backpack program and determine who would be leader of the pack. Many of today's participants had a great time volunteering in a fun and competitive way. I think the hardest part of today was just sustaining our energy. You would think that we'd be able to do it for that short time, but boy, was that hard. <laughs> I decided to be a team captain because I love the food bank. When I think of food insecurity, I don't see numbers, I see faces of people who are really important to me. And being able to do an event like this and thinking of those people, being able to help them and people like them, it really means a lot to me. Part of the Leader of the Pack event included a fundraiser effort leading up to today's competition. The Corning employees were able to raise over $90,000 for the food bank. Josh Feldberg, Big Fox News, Elmira. A Corning man is behind bars after police say he intended to cause serious injury to someone with a loaded gun. Sean Mosco was arrested by the Steuben County Sheriff's Office for possessing a loaded firearm with the intent to use it on another person. Mosco was also wanted on an arrest warrant for falsifying a car identification number. Mosco was arraigned in court and faces attempted assault and weapon charges. New leadership in the Elmira Police Department continues to form as a new deputy chief has now been named. The city of Elmira announced that Scott Packard has been appointed deputy chief of police. Packard has worked with the department for 20 years and was most recently promoted to captain in January of 2023. A local high school will be sending both the boys and girls bowling teams off to states tomorrow. Big Fox's Maggie Hall spoke with the coach and students about this historical moment. Neither the boys nor the girls have ever gone as a team um, to the New York State Championships. So it's a, one heck of an accomplishment for both of them to go, and especially the same year. Um, so it's the first time for the school to ever have uh, the boys and girls go um, as a combined school. And it's the first time that the girls have ever competed um, the state championships. Haley is capping off her senior semester by being on the first ever Elmira girls bowling team to be going to states. Like bowling is something that where you all have a connection with like being like bowling since you were young and then seeing the same people over and over again it's just like you have like a family a big family. I asked other players what their thoughts are about going to the state championships. Uh, it's just fun and it's fun competing against other competitive teams and just going with my teammates. We weren't necessarily supposed to be the team that's going. We were kind of the underdogs in this situation. Ty Bull is also finishing off his senior season with the state competition. I'm mostly looking forward just to bowl and have fun with my team. Congratulations to both teams on this Elmira School District historical event. Maggie Hall, Big Fox News, Elmira. Corning's unified bowling team takes home the Section 4 champion title. The team fosters an inclusive environment, bringing together students with disabilities to play a sport with their peers. The team won first place in bowling at the Winter 2023 Unified Sports Tournament. This win caps off their winter season. The remaining members of the Grateful Dead, now known as Dead & Company, are coming to Ithaca. The show will be part of their final farewell tour. The band is returning to Cornell after 47 years in memory of the 1977 concert at Barton Hall. The concert is May 8th. Tickets are available through a lottery system with more details available on Cornell's website. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell is recovering in the hospital after a fall. 
McConnell was at a private dinner at a hotel in Washington, D.C. when he tripped last night. The 81-year-old was taken to the hospital for treatment. It's not clear what his injuries are. Back in 2019, McConnell fractured his shoulder after he tripped and fell outside of his Louisville, Kentucky home. President Biden unveiling his 2024 budget proposal today. The president wants to impose tax increases on corporations and billionaires in order to increase revenues to help improve programs like Medicare. Republicans are pushing back against the plan. Lauren Blanchard has more from Washington. We see this as a value statement on what the president sees in the future of this country. In a much anticipated afternoon address in the battleground state of Pennsylvania, President Biden speaking about the importance of his new 2024 budget plan. His proposals aim to cut deficits by $3 trillion over the next decade. It rolls back parts of the 2017 Trump tax cuts by increasing the corporate tax rate to 28 percent. And billionaires would have a 25 percent tax imposed on them as well. The added revenues would help strengthen programs like Medicare. We're going to say to the folks at the very top, hey, you can contribute a little bit more to something that is beneficial to everyone. Republicans declared the proposal will not see the light of day in Congress. The GOP controls the House, and they're waiting to see the president's plan in full before they release their own. Thank goodness we have the majority right now, because these are the types of things that absolutely would sail through if, uh, if Kevin McCarthy wasn't speaker. The budget battle coming at a time when the U.S. risks defaulting on its debt as soon as this summer. GOP lawmakers want to see a significant cut in spending before any deal is reached with the White House. On Wednesday, Fed Chair Jerome Powell made it clear a default would have long-standing harm on the economy. No one should be thinking that we have the tools to, to, to protect the economy from all the potential effects of that. The House Speaker met with President Biden last month on the debt ceiling, but since then, negotiations appear to have stalled. In Washington, Lauren Blanchard, Fox News. Here's your local stock market update from Big Fox. Your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm meteorologist Sam Ryan. We have a winter weather advisory issued by the National Weather Service that is in effect here beginning noon Friday and lasting all the way till 7 a.m. Saturday, where we could have three to six inches of snowfall. I think a lot of us will end up closer to that, maybe two to four inch range, but certainly possible some higher amounts, especially get above 1,400 feet. And then we have another storm we're watching closely Monday into Tuesday that could bring more accumulation and significant in areas. So as we look at temperatures overnight, we're going to see those falling into the 20s, even middle 20s by 6 a.m. And as we uh, head into around the region, we'll be in the middle 20s, as you can see. This main wave is going to be moving on through. We get a break in the action and we've got another potent storm. And that will arrive in the west and then <laughs> quickly move to the east. That will be our next snowmaker. So this first one, the heaviest, is sort of off to our west and down to the south. And then the next one will be coming through, and it looks like more widespread snow across central and northern areas. So here's zoomed in to time things out. Here we are at 11 a.m. noon time. Now we see the arrival of that snow, and we'll get into a lot of wet roadways, some slick spots out there, especially any kind of hilly areas. <laughs> These type of snowstorms are almost worse than when it's very cold out. This is coming through pretty mild with the air. And we're looking at highest amounts just off to our west. See, so get into like seven and eight inches there. In the light shaded blue, it's around two to four inches. And so that's kind of where we, we sit. This is the national weather services forecast around three to six for our area is what we're looking at um, and then a little bit less to the northeast and that's where we'll fill it in then this is the system monday and into tuesday showing double digit snowfall amounts and it even pushes all the way down new york city down into manhattan could have uh, quite a bit of snowfall here again that's preliminary things will change we know that the system itself is still pushing on shore in the west coast so take that with a grain of salt I just wanted to give you an idea of what we're looking at. 
26 degrees, and this has happened several times throughout the season, by the way, where we look at it, we think, oh, big snowstorm, and that turns out to be not as much. So we'll kind of keep an eye on that second system. 36 degrees at noon, 35 at 5 p.m., so a lot of wet roads as the snow is falling, and we might get that two to four inches of accumulation. Again, better chance of the higher elevation. Saturday, things begin to wind down, 34 degrees for a high, a little bit cooler outside, down into the teens Saturday night. We're back up to 42 on Sunday. A wintry mix then moves in Monday and into Tuesday. That's the system going to be watching closely. A lot of uncertainty on the details, which will change everything on the impacts around the region. And then we briefly cool down for Tuesday and into Wednesday. Overnight lows into the teens again, Tuesday night into Wednesday. Where people spent their money during the holiday season, a popular juice brand gets into the hard seltzer market, and how much money you need to make to be truly happy. CJ Papa has those stories and more in today's business briefs. Where do people shop to beat inflation? Apparently it's BJ's Wholesale Club. The big box retailer's earnings top forecasts. Its sales in the holiday quarter were up more than 9%. Online sales rose more than 20%. And BJ says 2022 was a record year. Its membership base is stronger than ever and the renewal rate is at 90%. Entenmann's is bringing back windows on their packaging after fierce customer backlash. The windows, which offer a preview of the baked goodies inside, were replaced in 2021. Meanwhile, Sunny D is likely to cause some commotion of their own with their Sunny D Vodka Seltzer. The company says the adult version is crafted to have the same great orange taste Sunny D fans know and love. Get yours when they hit select Walmart stores nationwide on Saturday. And money truly can buy happiness. And according to new research, our enjoyment comes at a cost of making $500,000 a year. The staggering figure comes from a study by a Nobel Prize winning economist. It contradicts a 2010 study that put peak happiness at $75,000 a year in income. The economist who came up with the smaller figure did conclude, however, that, quote, for most people, larger incomes are associated with greater happiness. That's business. I'm CJ Papa. More businesses are losing money and more customers are complaining about ineffective customer service. Teresa Priolo has more on how much businesses are losing due to unsuccessful handling of problems. It just felt like a lack of actually listening and doing something. It was like a lot of what was going on but no actual results or like no resolution like what can you do you're just telling me no 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 stop me if this story sounds familiar it had a telephone number and when you dial the number it said you have to go online the battle of frustrated customer versus customer service rep who will break first i hate like to deal with customer service and stuff but i feel like at the moment like, we cannot have anyone on the phone. Like, it's always you need to chat. It doesn't take much for New Yorkers to remember a bad customer service experience. And often the outcome is no answers, no resolution. I know that when I got an issue, customer service will be useless. Like, I know it. And a lot of anger. The latter proven by data. What's really changed is a percentage of Americans that say, I had a problem with a product or service. In 1976, about one third, 32 percent of Americans reported in a similar survey um, that was the basis for this one, um, that they experienced a product or service problem in the last 12 months. Today, that number is 74 percent. Scott Bretzman runs the annual National Customer Rage Survey, which, as the name suggests, measures the displeasure Americans experience, usually with big ticket items that can alter your household lifestyle, like an issue with the car or your dishwasher, your cable TV. And what they found was more people are complaining, more customers are looking to settle the score, and more companies are losing out as a result. It's costing business about $88 billion in lost revenue associated with ineffective problem handling. Perhaps the industry would benefit from the use of artificial intelligence or chat GPT, or maybe that'll create even more problems. There's a sign that the tight job market might be easing a little. More people were receiving benefits and receiving payments for longer in the latest reading. The number of new claims for unemployment benefits rose by 21,000 last week to 211,000. Continuing claims, the number of people remaining on unemployment benefits, 
rose to 1.71 million. The monthly employment for February is released tomorrow morning. Toy makers are planning to lower prices at a time when inflation is high. Toy demand has dropped in the last year as prices for more essential items have increased. Companies plan to bring back some fan favorites marked with similar prices from years ago. They hope to attract consumers who are struggling from the current economy. Fingerlings and the littlest pet shop are just some of the items making a return to shops. Still ahead, we're learning new information about how COVID-19 lockdowns negatively impacted prisoners. A look at how they're trying to catch up, coming up. From classes in carpentry and barbering, to college-level creative writing courses, and even trauma counseling sessions, many prisons and jails around the country offer programs for inmates to reform their ways and to learn how to adjust to life after their release. But some critics say these opportunities are an unwarranted luxury for criminals. However, data is proving just how important these rehabilitation programs are in preventing people from becoming repeat offenders. Kevin Cork takes a look at how inmates are trying to bounce back after COVID-19 lockdowns stripped away their access to these sessions. COVID-19 lockdowns at the height of the pandemic put life as we knew it on hold. And across the nation's jails and prisons, Similar lockdowns also went into effect, preventing inmates from taking part in counseling and academic programs. Advocates say are critical for their mental well-being and rehabilitation. We need these programs. We need them. Because if not, it's, change is impossible. Data collected by the Associated Press found the 10 largest state prison systems either stopped or reduced in-person visits for an average of 490 days during the height of the pandemic. That little dark bubble of, of loneliness. Inmates were not only prevented from seeing family and friends, but volunteers from various educational and therapeutic programs designed to help inmates reform their behavior were also barred from entering. It was like being on an island by yourself. Large inmate populations combined with limited medical facilities made controlling the spread of COVID-19 difficult behind bars. More than 3,100 prisoners died from COVID-related complications through the middle of January this year, according to data collected by the law school at the University of California in Los Angeles. Meantime, the nonprofit group, the RAND Corporation, found inmates who participate in any kind of educational course while locked up are roughly 43% less likely to be a repeat offender once they are released. An unproven drug that was claimed to prevent against premature birth will be taken off shelves. The drug McKenna will not be sold in the U.S. after its company failed to prove its effectiveness. The company, Cobus Pharma, says the drug can help pregnant women reach a full-term birth with weekly injections. Currently, it's the only Food and Drug Administration approved medication used to prevent premature births. Since the company's failed attempts to show success, the FDA has tried to take the drug off the market. Now, Covis Pharma is voluntarily removing their product. The U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission announces a recall of office chairs over concerns they could break and cause injuries. Roughly 82,000 chairs sold at TJ Maxx, Home Goods, and Marshalls are being recalled. The commission says it received 12 reports of the chair backs breaking or detaching from the base. Those chairs sold between June of 2019 and December 2022 can be brought back to a store for a full refund. We'll have more right after this. We want to leave you with a smile. Krispy Kreme is celebrating St. Patrick's Day with a new gold-themed collection. Customers can now get the Good as Gold collection for a limited time. It includes four new donuts, the Golden Cookies and Cream Donut, Had a Gold Donut, Golden Sprinkle Donuts, and Rainbow Cream Filled Donut. And to keep the celebration going, on March 16th and 17th, Krispy Kreme is bringing back the Original Glazed Donut. Customers who wear green also can get a free Original Glazed Donuts, no purchase necessary. I'm Scott Beadle. Thank you for watching.